In today's lesson, Paul continues writing to the new Christians in Rome. This diverse group of Christians had issues. There were external pressures from government and society, and they had internal strife caused by differences in tradition between Jews and Gentiles. Jewish tradition had made the Jewish people the people of the law. The law of Moses included not only the Ten Commandments, but it included the first five books of the Hebrew Bible called the Torah. Paul himself was a convert from Judaism to this new faith. This new faith was a religion that was a threat to the Roman oppressors because of their allegiance to Jesus and his principles rather than to an emperor. It was a religion that was viewed as a wild cult by traditional conservative Jews who saw this movement as a threat to changing their established religious traditions. This new faith was a religion without a Bible, without a standing tradition. So the good news of Jesus was spread through preaching, secret conversations, letters, secret meetings. In this lesson, as in others, Paul wants all of us to understand that we all sin. We breach the letter and the spirit of God's law. Think about it. People are not rigid machines. We are inconsistent, imperfect. Sometimes this means that even with our best intent, that selfish person rises up and causes us to fall short of God's law. No matter how much we intend to stay within the posted speed limit, yeah, sometimes we're going to look down and see that we have slipped up over the posted speed limit and now we are exceeding the law. Here, Paul wants to remind us and help us to be understanding that we all sin. Here, Paul writes to these Jews and these converted Gentiles that the teachings of Moses and the prophets have come true when God sent Jesus Christ. We're no longer under the burden of the Mosaic law. Paul explains this break from Jewish tradition by clarifying that our faith in Jesus is all that matters. Believing that God gave his son as the perfect sacrifice for our sins is sufficient to absolve us from our sin. For a church made up of people who had dealt with atonement for sin in various ways, this unifying faith as the atonement for our sins is a revolutionary concept. But remember, then just as now, this church is made up of diverse people with different experiences that have brought them to the altar, to this church. People from different backgrounds see the world and interpret those events through the experiences of their life. Even in today's church, we can see the same event and interpret it quite differently from the person sitting next to you in the pews. One Christian sees the Confederate flag and based on his family history, remembers the story of brave relatives who fought in the rebellion. Another Christian sees that same flag on that same day and based on their family history, remembers days of oppression and inhumanity. Diverse groups can interpret the same set of events in very different ways, and that creates frictions inside of any church because we are looking at the world based upon our experiences. Paul had advocated for this diverse church because Jews had accepted the gospel of Jesus Christ very slowly. But this diversity could cause friction, but it also was the reason why the church grew fast and spread. Often called the greatest evangelist in the early church, Paul knew that he had a unifying force for this diverse group because he knew that there was one belief in God, one death, one resurrection, one salvation through Jesus Christ, and that faith would unify this diverse group of people. Paul explains to this new body of Christians that sinners once lost are now made whole by faith in Jesus Christ. 
writing to those self-righteous Jews that caused the internal strife, Paul writes, those of you who want to distinguish yourself from others in the body of Christ because of your traditions and your more advantageous status, those of you who claim to be better because you have the law, those of you who claim to be better because you are saved, Paul reminds those people and us today that we have nothing to be proud about. There is no basis for us looking at those people and distinguishing ourselves from others. Our salvation was not due to our obedience because we were so good. Our salvation is due to faith in Jesus and the unmerited grace of God. That's the lesson for this week. You all have a great week. Sorry I posted so late this week. Had a life-altering experience in Alaska looking at the creation that God has made. And I took a hike one day and came back singing, Oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder... Bye-bye.